not stopping writing, even if you can't think of what to say, writing things like this is a stupid exercise just sort of keeps the brain ticking and suddenly you'll find something trips and you'll have a whole load of content you need to write down. Power to Live More with Joe Dodds. Welcome to the Power to Live More podcast, all about productivity, organisation, well-being, energy and resilience. I'm Jo Dodds and I started this show to enable interesting people to share their stories about how they use their power to live more and by that I mean to do the stuff that they want to do more than the stuff that they need to or should do. It's about creating a life for yourself where you have the energy, health and space to be happy and fulfilled, spending your time as you'd like, whether that be at work, home or somewhere else entirely. That's your choice. Hello, my name is Ellie Dodds and I'm co-presenter and today Joe is interviewing Holly Scott Donaldson. Joe met Holly at an internet business school event run by Simon Colson where Joe was speaking. They immediately hit it off and talked about appearing on each other's podcasts and here she is. Holly is a marketing coach for the internet business school specialising in mobile and content, content marketing. Holly's background is entrenched in technology and service and services marketing, having worked with SAP software and consulting firms such as Cap Gemin, Ernest and Young, and most recently with D Villers Walton Consulting as global head of marketing. A time of maternity leave gave Holly the opportunity to reconsider corporate life and she took the action to retrain in the areas of digital and online marketing, starting with the Internet Business School. Holly has refocused her skills and now regularly coaches individuals on how to get up and running online and companies on optimised digital marketing strategies. Recently, Holly has been focusing on the new media available for the content marketing such as podcasting mobile apps and digital magazines having now published her own digital magazine back to biz a guide to getting back to work after life-changing events holly now runs overview courses in to what mobile marketing is all about and why it needs to be an important part of any business marketing mix Holly is refocused entrepreneur with a thirst for new approaches to the work-life balance. Back to the studio. Today I'm interviewing Holly Scott Donaldson of Back to Biz magazine and the Back to Life program. So welcome Holly, thanks for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. So tell us a bit about you and about uh, those very interesting sounding businesses uh, and where you run those businesses from. Okay, so I am in essence an online business coach and I've focused a lot recently in the past couple of years on emerging technologies for online businesses such as in the mobile space and I've fallen in love with the um, mediums of digital magazines and content apps, so mobile apps that deliver content to uh, niche markets and I just love helping people um, understand that technology and help them to see how they could actually build a business based off a life experience or their story and I mean this all came about only in the last couple of years because historically I've been working in the corporate world I used to be tech marketing for some big software houses as dull and boring as that was mm -hmm. and through the change of you know, my young children and how it affected my work-life balance, I just decided not to be doing all of that anymore um, and started doing some freelance. And eventually when I was made redundant from a project, I just decided, hey, I'm going to make a go of running my own business properly and helping other people to set themselves up online. So I've been doing a couple of years and teamed up with some great people like Simon Coulson of the Internet Business School, who's taught me so much, and I'm now um, an official coach through him, and that gives me quite a good audience to be able to help other people. And then just working with local businesses and local families here um, in Wiltshire, 
where who want to start getting up and running online. Lovely. Sounds really interesting and right up my street. <laughs> and in fact, we met at a Simon Coulson event, didn't we, a few weeks ago? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you're an excellent speaker, may I say. Thank you very much. <laughs> so tell us more about where you run your businesses. Are you, do you work from home? Have you got a, an office at home or do you sort of, uh, are you a bit of a digital nomad, as they call them? <laughs> <laughs> um, I am running it from home. Um I've been, even in my corporate days, I've done about 10 years of home working, um, which actually got very lonely. Um, so I've started up some local networking groups just to have an opportunity to get out and meet people where they're all home working people and we um, sit together and celebrate some successes. It's called the, the Woodborough Entrepreneur Group. But yes, in general, I am um, from home and aim to be a digital nomad. Um, to be able to go back and live in South Africa with my family as soon as I've cleared my British debt. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So do you have an office in your house or, or do you work wherever takes your fancy? Uh, yes, I, I'm living in a, I'm renting, it's, it's a nice large property. I've got three children, so they've got their own space and hidden in a corner is a hidden room that I've changed into an office and it's it's fabulous, it's got a great big window of looking the gardens, I've got light and space and creative space. Mm -hmm. That sounds nice. So tell us a bit about how you set yourself up in in the mornings then. With three children it sounds like it's probably a bit of a nightmare. What what are their ages? So I have an eight year old, a four year old and a two year old. Oh, sounds even more of a nightmare than I imagined. <laughs> so so do you have a morning routine and how do how do you sort of transition from family into into working? It's an excellent question, and I ask myself that every day. <laughs> um, I did actually laugh when, when I sort of read through some of your preparation questions. It's a routine. Is Do I have one? Do yeah. I really? <laughs> but actually, I have to say both my morning and my evenings are um, cut out very clearly for my children. They are all so young still and all have different needs. Um, I tried to muddle it all through. I used to, in my corporate days, I would have, you know, 7 a.m. calls and try and do those conference calls before the kids got up and then try and do an email while I'm packing their lunch boxes and things like that. And I've, I've absolutely stopped all of that. Um, I manage my day based off a spreadsheet, uh, literally giving myself how far slots from 6 a.m. till about 9, 10 p.m. And I, the first thing I do every week is block out where that children time is so that I'm not trying to be two people. I am 100% with them. So I try, I would say from about seven till nine, it's completely children focused, getting them dressed, getting them fed, getting them with the right PE kit and the right lunchbox without the fight over who's got what lunchbox, you know mm -hmm. that one. <laughs> Um, and then just get them to school. And I try and get up. My aim is to be up an hour before they're usually stirring. So I do have about an hour to gather my thoughts, have a cup of coffee in the bath, think about my work day and plan my own agenda. That doesn't always happen. But the definite thing is that I am fully focused on them until nine. Mm -hmm. Then I have to, um, then I very quickly have to, to, get back into the working uh, mindset. So um, being, you know, the, the luxury is I'm my own boss, I'm running my own company, even though I do have some some contracts with um, companies where I've got massive deadlines and that, you know, there are structures around that. I'm pretty flexible in how I manage the day, so long as I've pre-planned it on my spreadsheet, um, meaning I've looked at the tasks that are mandatory through the week, I look at my spreadsheet and find the blocks of time that are open. I'm not with the children or I'm not having to go to the dentist or I don't have a work call scheduled. I literally look for pockets of time where I can fill in the tasks and that gives me my structure for the rest of um, of the week. Yes, yeah, so that sounds really, well, really structured and it's something I sort of aspire to and, and never never get anywhere near achieving. I, I, I do take those pockets, but I tend to do it on a very ad hoc basis. So uh, I think um, I, mean, I have got plan the week in my diary on a Sunday evening, but quite how much planning actually happens, <laughs> I'm not sure. So that's that sounds really helpful. So as you say, it gives you that chance to to really sort of 
be in in the moment with whatever it is you've you've planned to do rather than constantly worrying that you've got things you haven't yeah. done yet sort of thing exactly that I found it very difficult as a solopreneur to manage all all of it from the sales to the actual doing of whatever work it is to the administration and the finance and all that rubbish in the background um, and I was constantly stressed in which bit I'm dropping so this way um, I make sure that those mandatory things like sending the invoices or chasing invoices are written in so I know that they're going to get done through the week and then I can take a creative step back and say okay from a working on the business perspective and building content for attracting new clients to me or any of that creative stuff that I need to do which are the most important to do how long do they take and how much space have I got in the week um, and pull out those most compelling tasks by value and that's a trick that I learned from the wonderful man Ed Dale who's yeah. an online uh, marketing guru he runs um, he's taught me a technique called the Kanban a Japanese um, task management system all run yellow sticky notes on a big whiteboard in a set structure but it helps you to very clearly pick out the task that needs to be done by the value it's going to add to your business going forward and that's changed my life it really does help me to not just the things I like doing but the things that are really going to add value to to my week and to my business mm. and then I plan them through into the the holes that are available in my crazy schedule <laughs> and do you do sort of daily planning as well on top of that weekly scheduling yes so you have the the week idea of what you need to get through and you have to make sure that every um, sticky note is at the most granular level of any task we all tend to do our planning at quite a high level like complete the website or um, contact clients and actually when you break that down there's about six or seven mini tasks underneath all of that and he's taught me to really not just look at the big task get down to that granular level and see how many of those I can physically realistically get through my week mm. and they go into a holding a holding column for the week and then on a daily basis I only ever pick up one sticky note put it in my actual doing box do that box until I can move it to done and I pull one task at a time on a daily basis so I might get three or four of those micro tasks done on a day um, and it's great because you suddenly see quite a lot of volume in that way going through into your done box and you feel a lot more satisfied and feel like you're achieving something um, but it, yes it's that picking out those most valuable granular tasks happens on a daily basis yes yeah and so it sounds quite paper-based as far as planning do you, do you use any technology to, to help with that I know um, I'm trying to think what that uh, tool is that does use the Kanban um, oh it's Trello Kanban. say again Trello Trello yes that's There's exactly three, what I meant yeah yeah, yeah. Trello and Slack they're, they're two very good tools again introduced to me by Ed Dale so Trello I'm using for my big picture what are those higher level tasks um, I really uh, Trello is very interactive you're making your your little um, blocks of projects but you can actually move them around your board depending on how you've arranged your columns so if you have planning doing done or to do you can pull that task with your mouse and drag it into the relevant column so it's very easy and interactive but when it comes down to creative um, I am a strong believer in getting a, stepping away from technology and using pen and paper yeah um, again another Ed Daleism but it, it's proven to be so successful for me my brain operates differently when I'm looking at pen and paper and having to use you know my hand to write down than when I'm typing into a computer I go into much more a mechanical mode at that point and I lose the edge I stop creative thinking and I just become functional so I do most of my things on paper and then at some point I'll revert it into uh, onto the computer but the the pen and paper is my king at the minute 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really, really interesting. It's not something I do much of, but uh, certainly I've, I've read quite a lot to say that, uh, that that it's helpful, as you say, from a creativity point of view. And we've certainly had some guests already who've who recommended it. And I, I was at a mastermind meeting a few weeks ago and we had to do a bit of sort of brainstorming onto post-it notes. And it, it is interesting how much more tends to come out, partly because you're under pressure to <laughs> create a load of post-it notes, yeah. but also, as you say, you, you do, I think, get more granular with it. Absolutely, absolutely. And the um, timing yourself on the amount of time that you have to do the task helps a lot. Mm. And also being very disciplined about not not stopping writing. Even if you can't think of what to say, writing things like this is a stupid exercise just sort of keeps the brain ticking and suddenly you'll find something trips and you'll have a whole load of content you need to write down. But unless you keep going, it doesn't happen. It's, it's like this beautiful door that you step through. And what most of us do is, is sit and think. We're not doing anything with our hands and not doing anything except for trying to force the thought and it doesn't come. So this, this continuous writing plays a trick on you and helps bring that flow through. It really works. Yes, yeah. So that's um, Trello as far as some um, technology and, and and obviously lots of paper and pen as we've just said and, and interesting as a as a digital uh, entrepreneur that uh, that there is uh, that pen and paper. What about other technology, other tools and apps that that you use and would recommend? Um, so Slack is something I've been introduced to and I'm loving. That's S L A C K. A sort of project management communication tool. Apparently, it's one of the fastest growing pieces of software around at the minute. Um, and it's very, very good if you are part of a, um, a team of people that are all virtual. It helps you not just instant message each other, but you can, the whole group can share documents and um, see each other's notes, or you can do them as private notes. Mm. It's just uh, working with, so Ed is in Australia, some of our outsourced team are in South Africa, my clients are in England and Germany and America, so it does take a good piece of technology that um, is not too difficult to learn and everybody can jump on board quite quickly and Slack's certainly proven to be that. Yes, and there's lots of integrations, isn't there, with uh, with Slack now and, and more coming along as well, which which can make it uh, even more valuable for people. Yeah, yeah and it's it, both on my desktop and my um, on my phone and, and iPad, and it's seamless. It's beautiful. Mm, mm. I like elegant tools, and it's certainly elegant. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, any others? Um, I think my, my kings at the minute. Um, Trello is is certainly being that big master board. My own whiteboard in my um, office, which with all my sticky notes on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is a, a mobile app called Achiever, um, which helps me with um, routine, ironically. What are the big, you know, what are the routines of the most successful people around? Um, what do they do every day? Um, and what do I need to do every day? Like the daily walk or... Um, spending 12 minutes doing mindfulness. So some of those non-work related but success related activities I track on um, this app called Achiever, A-C-H-I-E-V-R. Um, and that's making me keep <laughs> aware of the things that I often forget such as mindfulness, which is a key part to success. Yes, yeah, I use something called Momentum that uh, does something similar. I haven't quite managed, apart from taking my tablets in the morning, I don't think, I, and maybe my to-doist planning. I don't think I've managed to get a streak of more than I don't know three or four days on anything else. My daily walks don't always happen. <laughs> my, uh, I don't know what, going to bed by eleven o'clock that doesn't always happen. <laughs> but it's it's interesting, isn't it, to see and and just to sort of prompt you. One of the things actually, I, I have um, I do daily French stuff vocabulary and things like that and I I hardly ever miss that because it's quite easy to to do the vocab stuff so when I'm checking momentum at the end of the evening I think oh I haven't done that I you know I go off and do the the French thing even if I've missed the walk (laughs) for example (laughs) so it's useful in some ways yeah very good to do those those little achievements through the day yes yeah very very 
So you talked a bit about mindfulness. Let, let's talk a bit about what you do when you're not working, what you do to, to relax and uh, and switch off. Obviously, you've got the children, so I guess that's, I don't know, that's not, perhaps not so much relaxing, but definitely switching off from work. <laughs> well, I, I have to say, um, had you asked me these questions about two years ago, I I wouldn't have known how to answer them. I had a business to set up. I had you know, bills to pay, some significant bills to pay, and children's activities to pay for. It was all about earning money, and every waking minute, if it wasn't getting a child to school, was sat at my desk focusing on just making money, and it all came crashing down, and it, it needed to. That's not a healthy way to live. So about, well, it's over a year ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and spent... Then you know, at that moment everything stops. You go through surgery, you go through treatment, and then you have to recover from the treatment. And I made a massive promise to myself, to my family, to my children that I would stop that chaotic lifestyle. Everything was run on adrenaline. So now relaxation and time are very, very important things to me. Um, so I think the first and primary was special family time. Um, I've just been away for three weeks with my children to South Africa, and while it was tough, I, my husband couldn't come with us. I traveled by myself and had to amuse three children on a daily basis. It was a completely different changing routine from here. And just, you know, getting sun cream on three children, getting to the beach, getting back from the beach without tears and tantrums was relaxation in itself. It yeah. really was. Yeah. Um, and our biggest problem is the beach or the pool. <laughs> so, you know. Special proper family time is definitely my number one relaxation. Um, and my second is my garden. Um, I have a lovely, I'm in a rented house, but it has a wonderful garden that I'm responsible for, which I've always found a burden because, you know, it had to be done, had to be done. Actually, now I've chosen to go back into it, and spring is here. It's It's such a wonderful stress reliever, and I make sure I'm not really thinking work while I'm in there. Creative ideas come, but you can never stop that. But a new article I might do, but I'm certainly not thinking about deadlines and all that horror. <laughs> yeah. I'm really interested to, to, to see how you made that switch. I, I obviously understand that the, the, the cancer diagnosis and the treatment and everything was a, a massive shift in your life anyway, which which you know naturally leads to, to things being different. But But actually doing some of the things that you're talking about is still quite difficult if you're that driven person who yeah. you know, needs to be yeah. frenetic because that's what you've always done. How, how did you make that shift? I will lay all the success to my wonderful friend, Astrid Kaufman. Um, Astrid is a, is a friend of mine, and she's also a, a practitioner of something called Jin Shin Yitsu, which is an ancient Japanese... Um, therapy, I think, um, which deals with your own body's energy levels and if you've got pain, you hold yourself in a certain way and you will relieve the pain. For example, you hold the outsides of your ankles if you've got a headache and the headache will go away. Now, I had, for, for years before my diagnosis, um, Astrid had said to me from time to time, Holly, you are running on such a low energy level, it's, it's full adrenaline, but you're never replenish, re, replenishing yourself. Mm. You need to come and see me for 40 minutes. You know, I'll give you a free treatment. I'm just am worried about you. I said, yeah, 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 whatever. And to please her and to be able to see her for a cup of coffee, I would go and sit down. But I never gave myself into the therapy until uh, my diagnosis. And actually, while I was going through the diagnosis, she said, okay, come and see me. We will just, I'm going to put you on the couch and I'm going to do these um, treatments on you. And I started to drift off into, uh, I really understand what giving yourself over to peace, uh, peace and tranquility is. I stopped thinking about everything. I think it was such a big monster sitting in my head. I just completely blocked it and thought of nothing. And her treatments brought such a calmness and understanding and ease with it um, 
it, it saved my sanity. It allowed me to get rid of that adrenaline junkie fix and to look at life through a completely different lens. And everybody who knows me before, during, and after said I'm a completely different person now. I'm actually, the things I do, I do with purpose, but I'm not doing everything. I'm only doing the things that A, are making me happy, and B, have a purpose and a value, rather than trying to please everybody else. And I will say no, and I will step back from things for my own health's sake, but more importantly, my, my children's sake, you know, I've got to a two-year-old, she was one year old at the time, so to leave a one-year-old child with no mum because I'm too busy to look after myself is just ridiculous. So my own mental reality check plus Astrid's Jin Shin Yitsu techniques that gave me calmness and tranquility um, mm. saved my life. <laughs> yes, yeah, really, really powerful and um interesting because as I say well when you've got the whole um adrenaline thing going on your cortisol levels are high and all that sort of stuff it's it's physical as well as mental isn't it it's not just about you um feeling like you have to or just being so used to doing some something your body's actually driving you to do it as well so uh, yeah I, I would uh, very little sleep lots of caffeine and and just unless I had a deadline and a project to do I didn't think I was succeeding at anything hmm Mm. Um, and it's it's very dangerous. Apart from burnout, which you know anybody in any corporate position can can get, we we I don't know for some reason society's got us into this this pace of you know you've got to always be doing something to achieve it. Well, actually, I've achieved so much more in my new life by stepping back, calming down, thinking about it, um, just being and being real. Um, it's it's yeah. it's been such a valuable thing. Mm, yeah. So, what about generally keeping healthy? I guess it's it's really top of the mind for you with everything you've been through in the last sort of uh, nearly eighteen months and and so on. So, what sort of things do you, do you do to look after yourself other than obviously, as we've said, relaxing and the mindfulness and so on? Yeah. Yeah, mindfulness very definitely um, a big one. I continue with my Jin Shin Yitsu. Um, with Astrid. She's got a website called flowsforlife.com um, where she puts lots of self-help techniques. So I don't have to go physically to see her. I can actually practice it at home. Mm -hmm. um, I still have, so my baby's two, everything hit me when she was only one and I haven't got my figure back. So I'm on a quite a, a strict regime to feel a bit more like me again. <laughs> Um, so that's Pilates and, and an exercise class and a deep stretch class with a lovely lady in the local village. Um, sleep. Sleep, major thing. Um, from the times of that adrenaline junkie day, I, I don't even know how many hours I slept if I ever really properly slept. I'd wake up with ideas and have to write them down and just never really switched off. And I have found um, now, if also fatigue that hits you after chemotherapy and radiotherapy and the stress of having cancer has knocked me a lot more than I ever thought it would. So I've had to give myself over. If I need to go to sleep, I will go and take half an hour or an hour and I make sure I'm getting at least eight hours every night. Otherwise, I crumble and it, I get stomachache. Mm. It started to physically affect me, which I never thought I'd feel before. I never felt before. Maybe I did and I just didn't notice it. But those are my, my warning signals. My stomach starts to, to be sore, and I'm like, okay, that's fatigue. Stop. Take care. Mm. Um, mm. So listening to myself as well. And do you have any tips you for, 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 for getting to sleep, for, for, for having those naps? Or is it just that you're so tired it's quite easy? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, yes. Um, there are days I can just sit in a chair and fall asleep anywhere. Um, but I use some of Astrid's techniques from the um, Flows for Life website. She has um, a special way you can hold. You put your right hand on your head and your left hand on your sternum in the middle of your breast and just breathe while you're holding on to yourself, just gently holding on to those two places and you'll be amazed. It's like a it's like a curtain that comes down and just says, okay, now you're allowed to relax and go to sleep. Right. So she, 
I, I recommend her website to anybody that's struggling with anything. It just helps you immensely. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So moving on a bit to thinking about um, learning and, and improving yourself, you sound like you you probably do that a lot. You've already mentioned a couple of uh, mentors that that you that you're working with, and obviously your business life has changed considerably over the last few years. So what do you do to learn and and improve what you're doing? Um, I stay very close to um, a few people that I think are are massively influential. Um, so that's Simon Coulson here in the UK and Ed Dale I've mentioned in Australia. Um, through Simon Coulson there's quite a good network of fellow entrepreneurs um, like Andy Harrington and um, uh, James, forgive me I can't remember their name. Labors? But, say again, sorry? James Labors? No, he's not the UK one. Yeah. Um, they they have business growth systems. Dan Bradbury and um, Nick James. Yeah. Um, and now they've Nick has his own company um, called Seriously Fun Business. But one thing I did find is I, if I read something of someone I really liked, I subscribed to what they had to say, and I ended up having 50 emails a day from really inspirational people, and I felt overwhelmed. I'm never going to achieve all of this because there's too much to do. Yeah. Um, so what I've tried to do now is I keep aware of the main thought streams that these people have, but I stick close to only a couple um, that I, that really every time they have something to say, it's worth sitting up and listening to. So Simon and Ed, whatever email comes out, whatever video they produce, I am there, I read it, I listen to it, and I act on it. Um, Ed certainly has things that come out um, even in just one quick 10-minute email it, or video, it's usually an instructional thing that if I do that, it will make a big difference. So I just don't ask questions anymore. I do what he says. Mm. And it works. They say, um, don't they, that that's, but, a, that's a, a big thing to learn as, a, as an independent entrepreneur, that actually if you invest in something or you sort of learn from somebody who's, who's doing something well, that actually just doing what they tell you is sort of the sensible yeah. plan because we have a tendency to, to to see what other people are doing and think we can tweak it and generally that's before we actually know enough of what it's supposed to do to uh, to actually be able to do that in the right way. So I think that's that's always a good learning point, isn't it? That if you totally. if you totally. value what somebody I, says, just do what they say. <laughs> yeah. I am. Um, I have a wonderful client of mine who. Um, He's ex-military services and suffers from post-traumatic stress. And he called me up and said, I really want to build a website for my new business. He's changed to training dogs. Um, I want to get this up and running, but I can't go to a physical class. I can't read a textbook. I just need help in bite-sized um, chunks. So we set up a plan of half an hour every week for about two months. And I guess also because he's ex-military, you know, if you tell him an order, <laughs> yeah. give him an instruction, he follows it, no question. We made more progress in the two to three months and got his website up and running and he was earning money through it than any of my other clients who want to question why or find a thousand reasons why they can't do X, Y, and Z. You know, I'm not here to force them to do anything, but he proved the fact that if you just do things in a simple, logical order, without questioning it until you're up and running you're going to succeed and he showed me to remind myself about that with with the people I follow yes yeah yeah so what about um other opportunities for inspiration and and learning things like books films and music is there anything you recommend in in uh, those genres <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, well, recently I found myself, uh, you know, the trend amongst those online gurus, they're all writing a book all of a sudden. I mean, Andy Harrington's brought out um, Passion into Profit. Um, Simon, I know, is working on one. Um, there's the key people of influence. I think it's Daniel Priestley. Daniel Priestley, David. Yeah. 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 I found his book amazing. What was great is I could check off a few things. Yeah, I do that. I do that. I feel pretty good about that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I've been reading books from, from the people that I follow. Um, 
And then music is, is a big thing. I, particularly when it comes to mindfulness, I have quite an eclectic choice. You know, I'm South African by birth, and I have um, African music in my bones, as it were, and I put on my, my African deep music and just lie there and think of nothing. So music is a great way of just changing my mood and my attitude. Mm. Um, I used to find, do I call it ethnic music? You know, Non-pop culture music does that a lot better for me where it really gets into you know, your, your, your rhythm as opposed to shouted out beat music. Um, so yeah, I, I listen to, I often listen to Radio 4 driving around because there'll be topics that are completely out of my normal sphere and make my mind think. And also, I've got the world of podcasts, the, being a guest on a podcast, but there are so many brilliant inspirational podcasts out there that when I'm doing the school commute or back from the school commute or wanting to get my, going up to some training session, I will listen to a podcast to get in the right head zone for mm. it. Yeah, as you know, I'm a big fan of, of podcasts and uh, the one thing I've had to learn is, a bit like with books, you don't actually have to listen all the way through. <laughs> So there's so yeah. much out there that I sort of, you know, I'm trying to consume loads of stuff. And then, and then, you know, I realize that actually I'm not really enjoying this particular one. It's like, well, I don't actually have to listen to this one because there's, you know, many more out there that I can listen to yeah. instead. So I think that's a, that's a top tip. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what about if things don't go right, if you have one of those days where it all, uh, it all goes a bit pear shaped, what, what happens? How do you deal with that? Um, I've learned this new habit, and I struggle with it, so I'm still learning. Um, forgiveness. You know, stop beating myself up. It is okay that things are not all tickety-boo and things don't go according to plan. Um, you know, I no longer sit with some line manager above me who's going to either shout and scream at me or dock my pay or one of those terrible demons. It's only myself pushing me and... What I'm trying to do is inspire other people, and if I allow my um, less successful moments to be showstoppers, then how can I be inspirational? So, you know, a, a year of cancer has shown me a lot. It has shown me how to get up and keep going in adversity. So, if that can't stop me, a down day is certainly not going to stop me. Absolutely. Just keep going. Yeah, yeah. So on a day when you end of the day knowing that you've had the chance to live more, so you've had that uh, day where you've done the things you wanted to do wh rather than necessarily the things that you, you know, had to do, um, what, what have you done? What do those days look like? It's usually the days I've cooked pancakes with my kids. <laughs> I love pancake, pancake and pyjama day if we're in this country. Um, just being together or we will actually go out and do something, go, go swimming. Um, and in the last three weeks I've had the benefit of picking a, uh, packing a picnic for, you know, their evening tea or supper and going to the beach and flying a kite and, and getting completely full of sand before we go back and have a bath time. I mean, those, those are things that you can't buy. They're things that... Um, if you're seriously ill, you can't get out of the door and go and do. And I'm every single possible opportunity that I have to go and do that right now, I'm going to do because who knows? One day I might not be able to get out of the chair and go and do it. Mm. Yeah, it's uh, it does focus focus you on taking those moments, and I think think relishing them while they're happening, isn't it? That, that's something I've tried yeah. to do more in the last few years. Certainly, really enjoying that moment rather than thinking about what I could be doing instead or what I've got to do later. Yeah. And in a, in a workspace, I've found really brilliant days, really successful days are those that I've got up, gone out, and been with a group of people, like coming to Simon's uh, Platinum Day a few Sundays ago, getting back into a group of people that are of the same mindset, that are striving for success, that are sharing experience, that really fired all my my systems for me and got me re-motivated again. Those are brilliant days. Yes, yeah, definitely. I'm interested in the, the um, networking that you said that you've set up 
locally. I used to do a lot of networking when I first started my business and I haven't done local networking for about three and a half years and I just went uh, and uh, set up a, a breakfast meeting a few weeks ago and just came back so enthusiastic and energized and inspired by the people that were there it was it was it was so good it just reminded me of what I've missed the last three years <laughs> yeah it's very very important particularly from a sharing of success and self mutual motivation it's mm. it does the, the heart the power of good we were we were, it was quite funny at ours because we had a number of therapists who whose stories were very much as is often the way that they'd been ill and had issues and that had, had taken down the route of you know receiving treatment and then retraining to to deliver the sort of treatment that uh, that had helped them so much and they were telling some really compelling emotional stories as they were introducing themselves around the table and then one of my um business friends I, i've known for a good number of years who used to come to my networking group a few years ago um kept, was up next so my question was trevor what story do you have about why you fix microwaves because <laughs> 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 he has a microwave uh, shop and he sells uh, spares and they mend microwaves and uh, he does a, a great job of it and he's a he's a lovely a lovely uh chap and service provider and everything else and we were just laughing as we left that uh, he's got to come up with a story that's really inspiring <laughs> about a microwave journey getting there <laughs> you never know though you never know exactly exactly so it's um it's come to the end um and uh, it's been really enjoyable holly and i've covered uh, we've covered um uh, you know lots as as ever loads of great resources and recommendations in there um, so thank you very much. How can people find out more about you and connect with you? Okay, so the first place is um, my digital magazine, which is available in iTunes. It's only available on Apple devices at the minute, and that's Back to Biz, B A C K number two B I Z. Um, that's full of inspirational stories of people who've faced some type of adversity and changed the way that they do work and gone back to work after life-changing events. Um, and through there, you'll find all my contact details. Otherwise, my website, which is hollyscottdonaldson.com. Um, and I think it has a, it had a glitch while I was away on holiday. I'm going to try and fix that today. <laughs> but um, that will that's sort of a portal into all the things I'm doing with apps and uh, digital magazines and starting to talk more about the Back to Life program. Lovely. Excellent. Well, I'll make sure those links are, are on the show notes so that people can uh, go and have a look and uh, see what you're up to. So thank you very much. Thank you. Very nice speaking to you again. Joe's Gems. This is the part of the show where I do a recap of the key points of the interview, the stuff that I really liked and the apps, books, music, tips and tools that were shared. This is for you if you heard something that you wanted to check out but you couldn't write it down at the time. Hopefully I've got you covered. And this is the bit for the really time pressed. You can just listen here and get the gems from the interview. But of course I wouldn't suggest you do that and miss out on the great conversation that I had with Holly. The three tools we talked about today were Trello, which is the project management tool that's based on the Japanese Kanban system and uh, Holly talked about using it for her big picture but then also breaking down the tasks, the projects into smaller tasks and put, making post-it notes um, on a whiteboard and being able to move things around and how when she's done that using the same principles on Trello can be really helpful for her to manage what she does and she talks about having columns that were planning doing done or to do and that you move the, uh, the the projects the tasks across each of those columns uh, very uh, similarly to how she does that with her whiteboard and her post-it notes she says it's very easy and interactive we talked about slack which is a communication tool again can be used uh, as part of project management very much about collaboration and there's lots of integrations that you can get with slack to other tools and apps that you might be using already and uh, Holly said it's really good if you're part of a team especially when you're virtual because it helps you to do uh, things like instant message each other but also share documents and information and create messages that everybody in the team can see rather than having sort of one-to-one -one communication that you then have to copy other people in later further down the line so a very good collaborate collaboration communication tool and then she talked about Achiever which is a mobile app 
which helps her with her routines. So uh, it gets you to say what you want to do every day and then you check off whether you've done it or not and it helps you to to track that. Uh, so she says it's keeping her aware of the things that she quite often would forget to do otherwise, such as things like mindfulness, which she finds really important to do on a daily basis. When we were talking about other resources, we were talking about uh, Holly's friend Astrid Kaufman, who is um, a pr- practitioner of Jinshin Jitsu, hopefully I said that right, which is an ancient Japanese therapy. And Holly was talking about how Astrid had spoken to her on a number of occasions about getting involved and, and doing um, some of the exercises, some of the things that you do within that particular therapy. And Holly said that, you know, she used to sort of not be that interested. She might get a bit involved, uh, do do um, a few bits and pieces that Astrid had recommended to her. But actually, after Holly was diagnosed with cancer, uh, she did go to Astrid for help with basically calming everything down in her life. Astrid talked about how she was very much running on adrenaline and that she needed to really sort of offload some of that stress and, uh, I guess, physical trauma as part of her recovery. And she said her treatments brought such a cal- calmness and understanding and ease and it saved her sanity. She says it allowed her to get rid of that adrenaline junkie fix and to look at life in a completely different way. And she says that actually people who know her now or who knew her before and during and after uh, her illness and her treatments and the let me say it again Jinshin Jitsu says that she's actually a completely different person now which I thought was really interesting the sort of power of uh, of that therapy and how she's changed her life as part of that. Holly talked about influential people that she follows and she says that she stays very close to a few people that she thinks are really influential and she mentioned Simon Coulson in the UK, Ed Dale in Australia and then she said through Simon Coulson in the UK, there's quite a number of other entrepreneurs that she did, does like to keep uh, sort of uh, in touch with as far as what they're doing. And that's people like Andy Harrington and Nick James. The book that Holly mentioned uh, as being a really good book that she found amazing is Key Person of Influence by Daniel Priestley. It's something that I've read as well. and I do think it's a, a really valuable book to read as an entrepreneur. When we were talking about music, Holly talked about African music as she's uh, from South Africa by birth and she said she has African music in her bones and she said she quite often will put that sort of music on and just sort of lay there and think of nothing and use it very much for her mindfulness and she says it sort of helps her much better than some of the perhaps pop music or, or different types of music. Holly also said that she likes listening to Radio 4 when she's driving around. She said there's quite often topics that are so out of her normal sphere that uh, really help her to think and and sort of learn new things. And then we talked about podcasts in general. Holly said there's some brilliant inspirational podcasts out there and she quite often listens when she's on the uh, school run uh, to get her sort of in the right place and also, you know, just to learn things. And and as you probably know from me uh, mentioning them a lot, I, I... absolutely recommend having a look and seeing what podcasts are available because there are tons and tons of them there's you know something for everybody at the moment when we're talking about time management holly was saying that she basically uses a spreadsheet and she said she has half hour slots from six in the morning till nine or ten at night and then the first thing she does at the beginning of every week is actually block out where she's going to be with her children. She says she doesn't want to try and be two different people and sort of muddle up her work life and her home life. She wants to be 100% with the children. So she blocks those bits out at the beginning and then fits things in to the schedule once those are blocked out, which I thought was a really good way of making sure that that time is really sacred. And then she says she then looks at what she's got, looks for pockets of time and then sees where she can fill those pockets of time with the tasks that she needs to get done during the week. She likes to try and get up an hour before the children get up in the morning to have an hour to get her thoughts together and have a cup of coffee and think about her work day and plan her agenda. It doesn't always happen um, but certainly as soon as the children are up she is fully focused on them so she does try to get that time in before they get up if possible. In common with many of my guests Holly talked about using pen and paper and liking, preferring using pen and paper at times, uh, which I always find very strange. (laughs) She talked about creativity and she said it's, she thinks it's really important to step away from technology 
uh, and use pen and paper. She said her brain operates differently when she's got the pen in her hand and she's writing things down uh, than when she's writing on a computer, typing into a computer. Uh, she said she thinks she loses the edge and, and stops being so creative. So that's quite an interesting um, tip, which is to use the pen and paper to help you to be creative. And then she talked about writing and how when you're trying to write sometimes you can't think what to write you can often sit there with you know nothing happening and a pen in your hand and a bit of paper and or perhaps in front of your computer if you're not using the pen and paper option and get a bit stuck and she said actually it's really important just to keep writing should even if you write something like this is a stupid exercise it keeps your brain going and it keeps your hand moving sort of thing and she said suddenly it, it, it sort of you just feel something trip and then more content comes she and I loved the phrasing she used she said it's like this beautiful door that you step through <laughs> and she says most of us just sit there and not do anything and then nothing really happens but actually if you just keep writing whatever anything then it will really help with the flow and that reminds me of um, Paula Gardner when she was on the show talked about the Oh, I can't think what the book was called now. It's show number two, and it was um, there's a book that talks about creativity, and uh, her recommendation was to sit in the morning and write three pages of just rubbish before you even attempt to write anything more sensible, because that helps you to sort of get into that creative mode as well. So it did remind me of that. Holly talked about the Kanban, the Japanese task management system, and I mentioned that already in relation to Trello, but she likes to use a big whiteboard and sticky notes and um, actually writes all the tasks out onto the, onto the notes and then moves them around to help her to plan what she's going to be doing. And so she's got a, a, a holding column for the week, and then she says on a daily basis she only takes one of the notes and puts it into her doing box, which I thought was really interesting because I think, you know, many of us including me try and get much more done than is physically possible on a daily and weekly basis and that is sometimes why I think there's overwhelm because you just have so much stuff that you don't get done and then you feel like you've not achieved very much when actually you were never going to achieve that much anyway because there is limited time so I really like the idea of being very clear about uh, you know a, a small number of tasks and actually just making sure you get those done and, and being very clear that those are the only ones you're intending to get done and anything else is a bonus rather than having a big long list and not feeling that you've done very well when you've only done a few of the tasks on it. I mentioned already that Holly was diagnosed with breast cancer uh, just over a year ago and she said you know at that moment everything stops and you have to go through the surgery and the treatment and so on and recovery and she said she made a massive promise to her family and to her children that she'd stop the chaotic lifestyle where everything was running on adrenaline and she says that relaxation and time now with the family are, are, are so important to her and then when we talked about relaxation she talked about gardening as something that she used to think was a burden something she didn't want to do but now she sees it as a time to be mindful and a time to do things that aren't related to work she said sometimes creative ideas do come um, while she's doing the gardening but she's not sort of thinking about the the, the mundane tasks if you like um, she's really focusing in on the gardening and she talked about mindfulness and mentioned again the Jin Shin Yitsu with uh, Astrid, her friend, and her website flowsforlife.com. And she said there's lots of self-help techniques on there. She doesn't go to see her physically anymore. She can do most of the things that she needs to do at home. So it looks like that's a good resource for finding some of those mindfulness practices. And Holly talked about how important sleep is as well and again going back to when she was you know going through that really adrenaline junky time she said she'd never really slept properly she doesn't think she'd wake up in the middle of the night and not really switch off either and she said she probably didn't get you know the full sleep every night but now she said she will sleep if she needs sleep during the day she'll take a half an hour an hour to have a nap and she makes sure she gets eight hours sleep every night and she said she can tell now that uh, she's overtired or getting tired because she starts to get a store a sore stomach which she said probably did used to happen before, but she just didn't realise, she didn't notice. So uh, that was quite interesting. And she shared a technique from Astrid's website that helps her to get to sleep, which um, sounds like very useful if you're trying to nap and, and struggling to get to sleep as well. One thing she talked about um, in relation to the people that she follows in the internet marketing entrepreneurial world was about how you get all excited when you hear of somebody new and you sign up to their newsletter and the next thing you know you're getting 50 emails a day from lots of really inspirational people but you just can't keep up. So what she really tries to do now is really just focus on the key 
small number of people that she wants to really stay in touch with and not try and stay in touch with you know 50 or 100 different people because it's just too overwhelming so I like that idea of, of just picking your you know two or three people that you really value and following them we had a bit of a chat as well about the whole thing about sticking to successful models that you've learnt from the people that you're following and uh, I was saying how sometimes people uh, get things they buy a, a, a process a system and then they don't quite follow it to the letter because they find what they think is a better way to do it and then it doesn't work and they they wonder why and Holly shared a, a story of a client of hers who wanted to build a website and he, they basically set up a half hour every week to do the website set up very gradually and he just did what she told him and she said that he got his website set up and earning money from it um, very quickly and much quicker than a lot of her other clients um, because he just did what she said as opposed to listening to what she said and then doing something slightly different because he'd you know tweaked it slightly and um, it, he, Holly said it sh he showed her that um, it was something that she needed to think about the people she follows that when she's following them that she just does what they say as opposed to her own version of what they say and then we talked about living more, as we do, I do with all my guests. And Holly talked about it's the days where she cooks pancakes for their children or has a pyjama day or goes to the beach or flies a kite. She said, those are the things that you can't buy. They're the things that if you're seriously ill and you can't get out of the door to go and do, um, you know, they're, they're so key. And she says, every single possible opportunity that I have to go and do that right now, I'm going to do because who knows, one day I might not be able to get out of the chair and go and do it. I think that's such a good message for, for all of us, that living in the moment and actually taking those opportunities when we have them because we never do know whether you know they're going to continue or not. So that's a <laughs> bit of a depressing end <laughs> to the, to the uh, Joe's Gems. Um, but just a really lovely uh, interview with Holly and uh, it wasn't a depressing end. It's just you know nice to think about those family times and, and being able to focus on those. So, so to contact Holly... Uh, you can uh, look at her digital magazine available on iTunes for Apple devices and that's called Back to Biz. That's uh, back with number two and then B-I-Z. And you can also find more details about what she's up to on her website, which is hollyscottdonaldson.com. As ever, all the show notes are on the website. You just need to go to powertolivemore.com forward slash 20 and then you can get all the show notes from today's show. Use your power to live more. All this information is available on the show notes on the website powertolivemore.com forward slash 20 in this case. If you'd like to sign up to my weekly newsletter with more tips, strategies, ideas and tools to improve your power, you can do that on the website too. And if you go to powertolivemore.com forward slash focus, you can download my free report about how to increase your focus for better productivity. And I'd really encourage you to come over to our Facebook group as well, which is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash power to live more. And again, the link for these show notes are powertolivemore.com forward slash 20. And we look forward to speaking to you next time.